So hello everybody and welcome to our presentation about how to govern and maintain compliance using open source identity management components. Uh, my name is Katarina Valvikova. I'm Sean McKinney. And today's session objective is to learn the rationale for identity governance and demo some common use cases uh, using uh, open source identity management system called Midpoint. Uh, through the session, we will go through the ter terminology, benefits, uh, uh, we will explain what the uh, governance is, uh, then we will uh, explain our architecture and demo use cases. If you have any question also during the presentation, don't hesitate to ask. Um, first of all, what is uh, the identity management? Uh, Everybody works for some company. Uh, every company has the employees which uh, we need to manage. We need to manage the access rights, uh, permissions for them. So we need to create the, an identity for them. Uh, these users or employees are usually uh, organized in some organi organizational structures. They belong to some department. So we need to manage also this organizational structure. We need to do it in the secure way, using some security policies. Uh, as the companies uh, usually have uh, many systems, we need to do the provisioning of access rights for the users to different systems, and we need to keep the records of the users synchronized between all the systems. Uh, first of all, uh, when the new employee is hired, there is a HR department and there is some HR system. First, the record about the new employee is usually created in this HR system. Uh, pulling the data from the HR system, uh, we can uh, then uh, create the appropriate and create and as assign the appropriate access right for the new employee, so he can uh, then uh, um, perform his uh, work. Uh, for this, it's always good to have some centralized point or uh, it's good to have some identity management system uh, which will do it for you. Uh, the identity management system uh, will automate all the processes uh, related to the onboarding of new uh, users, also the offboarding of new users. It will ensure that uh, the users has only the rights they has, have, had to have, have to have, and uh, it will ensure that there is uh, only these accounts which should exist. Um, uh, it's common that uh, uh, many times uh, um, there are situations when you don't know uh, about the, um, many uh, about the accounts. Uh, for example, you don't know who is the owner of the account or who created the account, who approved the, this account, and so on. And this is uh, what is uh, identity management for. Yeah, no, identity management's great. We got one, and, um, you know, and it does some things for us, but there's some problems with it, right? And, um, and so some of those problems are listed here on the screen that are sort of common problems that we have in our enterprise. For example, there's some roles that are more important than others. They're, they're highly sensitive. And so they, they uh, deserve special handling. And so how do you do that in a way that's compliant and that, um, you know, that um, keeps you from, from having bad things happen from, from the wrong people having those sensitive roles? Or we'll have situations where maybe um, too many people have assignment to that role or too few people have assignment to that role. Perhaps there's situations where there's a violation of the principle of least privilege, where um, you know we've we've given too many people this 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 powerful role, or we have problems where um, you know say the manager goes on leave that's responsible for setting those roles up with their direct reports, and then while they're on leave, then that creates sort of a gap in the in the process, and then people are waiting around for things to happen while that manager's on leave, and how does that happen? Or maybe um, there are situations where um, perhaps some adjudication has to happen, which is to say, you know, maybe it's not just one person who has to approve uh, a role. One person has to sign it. Maybe there's two, three, four people, and they have to get together and decide um, whether this person should have um, access to this system. Or there could be situations where people are accessing the system directly bypassing the identity management system and adding groups and users directly to that system that then is falls outside of, of, of areas of compliance. So, I mean, and that's just a, a sampling of things that can go wrong. I'm sure that you guys, 
know plenty of other reasons or you wouldn't be sitting in this room right now. Yes, Sean, you're right. This happens very often. And probably what you need is uh, to have access certification, approvals, notifications, uh, then escalation or deputy and other features which all uh, build uh, the identity governance. As the Gartner says, combines with uh, identity management functions to meet audit and compliance obligations. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Gartner, Katka, seriously, Gartner, the lap dog for the the vendors. You're gonna th you're gonna pull out a buzzword for me. Um, identity governance. I mean, does that really mean anything, or is that just something that that the vendors use to to sell software to me? That um, you know that d it doesn't really do anything at all. So. Yes, Sean, also Gartner, but there are also other definitions like uh, uh, this one that identity governance uh, is uh, the mix of high-level business processes with low-level identity management processes. As you can also see on this picture, there are two parts, governance and ID identity management, but there is no exact uh, line where the governance ends and where the identity management starts. Uh, they preliminated each other and uh, there is very thin line uh, between them. Uh, but what you can see on this picture is that the governance is more business oriented and identity management is more technology. And it's all achieved by role-based access control. Sean, do you know what role-based access control is? Do I know what role-based access control is, Katka? Do I know? So I've spent 20 know. years of my career down in role-based access control. So I mean, that's a a well-known standard in the access management circles. It's been in use for decades. I mean, I got enough gray hair in, in on my head and, and to, to know that I've been in, that, in this space for a long time. So yeah, I know what role-based access control is. And so this slide is kind of gives you an example. There's a specification that governs it, ANSI Insights 359. And so it's more than just using roles. You've got things like users, roles, permissions, and sessions. There's various ways of, of applying these controls. Um, as you can see on the slide, you got RBAC1, which is hierarchical roles, RBAC2's static separation of duties, which is mutual exclusion and constraints between assigned roles, which is to say, hey, I can, be, I can be assigned a manager, I can be assigned administrator, but I can never be both of them at the same time because there's some toxic relationship there. There's RBAC3, which is dynamic separation of duties, which is mutual exclusion constraints between activated roles. So I might be assigned both of those roles, manager and and administrator, but I can't activate them in the session at the same time. So yeah, I, I've got a pretty good idea about that one. Thanks. Yes, John, you surprised me. And I see that you are really excited about the role-based access control. And uh, using the role-based access control together with uh, the defined policies, uh, which tell you about the actions which should happen, uh, you can achieve the governance features. Like, for example, policy, if uh, there is a policy that the role can be assigned only for one user, and then uh, someone tries to ex assign this role to uh, another one, there is a situation that uh, um, you have to uh, resolve the conflict, so you have to choose only the one user which will have this role assigned at the end. So this is what the governance uh, basically is. Uh, the solution uh, we work on together is based on the uh, open source identity management system called Midpoint. It is uh, implemented and delivered under the Apache software license 2.0. Um, have you ever heard about the Midpoint? Yeah, actually my boss told me to look at that um, a while back. So yeah, I did an evaluation of it. And so, um, you know, it's a Java application. It uses Java version 8. Uh, it runs inside of a servlet container. Any compliant servlet container will do. It uses a relational database. Uh, you know, it comes embedded. It comes with an embedded database, but in production, you'll want to have a, a relational database to store the master copy of, of, of users and policies that it's controlling. And then it has, um, you know, as far as the way, the way it works, it uses Spring, Spring Framework. You know, it's built on top of a bunch of well-known Java principles best practices. It uses Apache Wicket, which is a well thought of uh, UI framework for its UI component, and it uses uh, a framework called ConID for its connectors. And so that's kind of one of the cool things about Midpoint is that the connector framework 
is, is outside of midpoint. So the CON ID, if you build a connector uh, that's compliant with CON ID, then that connector can be used across different identity management systems. So for example, maybe you have as a target resource RACF and you know a legacy system running in, in and so you could build a, a RACF connector and then it could be used across any identity management system that, that's compliant with that framework. As far as the architecture, it's a well-defined architecture. It's comprised of five uh, subsystems. At the top is the GUI subsystem, which I already said was Apache Wicket. That's the user interface that sits on top of the model. And that's every system that interacts with uh, Midpoint will go through that model. And that's where the uh, identity management services security and user account mappings reside. And, um, and then those two top level components comprise uh, you know, the, what are considered the high level components. And those are highly customizable. And then that sits on top of the core. And the core is the, the lower components. Those are low level components. They're configured, uh, they're, they're considered to be configurable. And that's the repository, the provisioning subsystem and the infrastructure. So yeah, I've taken a look at it. I'm impressed, Sean. You know a lot about the midpoint. So uh, before we start with demo, I think it's uh, important to uh, make some uh, naming combination. Uh, resources uh, is a resource uh, in the meaning of when using midpoint is the target system where the accounts will be created. So is the target application or target system like uh, Unix system or AD or OpenLDAP LDAP or some other application Active like Directory, Google Apps. Rack F, anything yes. out there. And uh, a connector is something uh, what uh, is used to achieve the provisioning to the target system. Basically, it's the protocol transl translator. Uh, it is connected to the midpoint, and uh, using this connector, you can then create accounts and all this stuff in the target system. Then uh, the second uh, mm, is uh, the users and the accounts. User is the term used for the um, identity which is created in midpoint and uh, account is uh, the name used for the uh, account uh, existing directly in the target system like Active Directory or OpenLDAP or Linux system or anything else. So if you can build a connector for it, you can manage it? Yes, exactly. Uh, then uh, the provisioning, uh, this, uh, this is what we will show in our demo. Uh, there is a HR system where we create a new account and uh, then pulling the information from HR system, we create the user in a, a midpoint. And according to the position uh, for which the user was hired, we will create the uh, accounts in target applications. Okay, that's, uh, that's good. Um, so, all right, so we got this stuff running in a demo environment and uh, which is depicted by this, uh, or this screen right here. And uh, so I already told you that uh, Midpoint was Java, and so it's running inside of a, a web application archive. I'm an Apache guy, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run that in Tomcat. I mean, you could use whatever your favorite server container is. And, um, and so that's the main system. And then it's talking. I already mentioned that it needs a relational database. So I like PostgreSQL. That's my favorite. So that's the one I used in this environment. It's running natively on that same and oh, by the way, this is on a, a, a virtual machine running in, in infrastructure as a service uh, inside our CenturyLink data center in, in New York. And so um, PostgreSQL is, is running natively on that same machine. It's just a proof of concept environment. And, uh, but Midpoint could use, you know, it's flexible in terms of what relational database it uses. And then you can see off to the left, we've got three um, resources that are being uh, managed. And so the two on the bottom, you can see at the very bottom, we've got OpenLDAP, which is running natively on that machine. And uh, that's simulating, say, an Active Directory. Um, and then in the middle, on the left, you've got Google Apps. So we've got the Google Apps connector. And so it, um, this demo environment, we're going to be creating and deleting accounts inside of the cloud with the Google Apps connector. And then finally, on the top, we've got the inbound resource, which is a PeopleSoft human resource system. It's, um, we're using the uh, Oracle Human Capital Management Connector that's in Midpoint. And so the way that we're gonna demo this for you today is that um, we're gonna be consuming that XML file. And that XML file is in the, in the schema 
of the uh, Oracle HCM system. So it's, they've defined that schema. Is, is, uh, is it querying the HCM or is it, uh, is the HCM pushing uh, is it not So the way that the, uh, okay, so the question is, is, um, is the inbound resource, is, it, is, is midpoint querying the HCM? So is it, is it interrogating the HCM? Or is, the, um, is, it, is it pushing, um, you know, is it pushing in? So the answer is it depends on the, uh, the, the capabilities of the target system. And so um, connectors, you know, we, we talked about connectors. And, and really a connector is just a protocol adapter. And it's a very simple, unintelligent component. And so it, it's, it's got, say, six methods. Add, update, delete, search, and sync. And then there's a live sync. And so if the resource can do a live sync, then this can do a live sync. If it can't, then it could be just a push where, um, you know, it, it, there's like a, a, a task that runs periodically that then pulls that and updates it. So in this case, for this demo environment, we don't have the budget to, to pay the license fee to have an Oracle HCM system running live. So we're simulating this with this file, and then we're going to go in there, and you already saw us pull it up in the beginning. We're going to go in there, and we're going to edit it, and we're going we're gonna to create events, say hiring an employee, firing an employee, things like that. So the answer is, depends on the resource. And in this case, um, I'm not exactly sure if, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if, I'm sure it can do a live but sync. But usually uh, midpoint is querying the uh, target system. Yeah, that's the best way to do it for sure. Okay, good question. All right, so, um, so again, we've got this XML file. We're going to be going in there. We're going to be editing it, and we're going to be simulating this. In the real world, no one would ever edit an XML file to hire an employee. We're just doing that for this to, so that we can make these demo scenarios happen. Uh, we will show different use cases. Uh, it will be an onboarding of new identity. Then we will show the taste of the notifications. Also approvals, escalation, delegations, and uh, we will show segregation of duty, and uh, uh, at the end, the uh, certifications, like uh, access Who are those guys over to the right? Three Stooges. Are those, are those, don't our, know them? Are those our employees? Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> We're in trouble. So the first, uh, there are the scenarios. So the first is the onboarding of new employee uh, with the account activation. Then we will show the self service when the new uh, employee user will uh, request some roles. Uh, but uh, as he's, he doesn't have um, appropriate the rights, so the, these roles uh, go through the approval. And then uh, when uh, someone doesn't approve, um, uh, the request, there is an escalation process. Uh, then the uh, uh, next uh, scenario is role assignment. For example, some manager needs to assign uh, permissions for the user. And on this, uh, in this scenario, we will show the segregation of duty. Uh, the next scenario is deputy. And uh, last but not least is the access certification. So the first uh, scenario is onboarding new identity. Well, you're going to hire that guy? Yeah, we are oh, going geez. to hire Larry. You don't like them? Let me look at them. <laughs> okay, so let's hire Larry. Can you guys? So uh, let's hire Larry. We can see uh, this is the uh, XML export from HCM file. And we can see that uh, these are personal information about Larry. And here are assignments. We can see that Larry was uh, hired like developer in COBOL. And uh, he was hired also as a developer in uh, Java. Wait, you're going to let Larry code Java? It seems so. He's a stooge. Yes, but it was hard, like Java developer. I can't do nothing. So I'm going to sort of ask the same question. Was that uh, XML file generated by HCM? Yes. Yes. Okay. It's in the Oracle HCM schema format. Okay. Yep. Got it. So now when we look into our identity management system, We can see that there is no Larry. 
and Larry was hired as the developer uh, in Java and uh, and COBOL, and we can see that there is just a uh, um, development uh, department, but no departments for Java developer or COBOL developer. So let's hire Larry. So you're going to construct organizations in the target resource as, as part of this import? Yes. Okay. And uh, here we have the HCM uh, resource, which is simulation for the Oracle HCM uh, target uh, HR uh, application. Uh, we can see here all the accounts. Uh, we can see that three accounts uh, uh, were already created in uh, Midpoint, and uh, we can see that there is new uh, account uh, which doesn't exist in Midpoint. So now um, we can import him. Okay, Larry was imported, and we can see that uh, there are some personal information, and we can see that Larry was assigned to three roles. It's COBOL, Java, and uh, basic role. Uh, we can, but we can see that uh, he has only one account, and it's the HCM account for, from the HR system. Uh, no other accounts were created yet. And it's uh, because uh, Larry needs to activate his uh, account first. How does he do that? Uh, he well, this um, a notification mail was sent okay. to the Larry, but uh, one is that thing configurable? I, yes, okay. sure. I wanted to show also that there is the organizational structure which was created uh, during the um, Larry's import, uh, but we can see that uh, there are no members, so he was not uh, assigned uh, uh, to the COBOL and Java departments because he uh, didn't uh, haven't activated his account yet. So let's activate his account. So we don't have an SMTP server set up, so we're going to, uh, right now, these notifications are going to a yes. file. So it's uh, just simulation. So we can see that the notification mail was sent to Larry's with the, uh, with the activation link. And uh, also, mail was sent to the system administrator to see that something is happening in his application. So let's uh, activate Larry. Sure, you want to do that? Sorry? No, that's okay. Okay, we need to set password to activate his accounts. For example, so Larry clicks on the link. He, gets, he just three. sets his so, password. Yes. Yeah. Password policy. Did you not put the like the the bang on the end? So there's midpoint enforces password policies both um, in this in in the users that are stored in the, in in midpoint itself and in the target resource. So yes, but this is very strange password policy. Okay. You probably just missed a character there. <laughs> probably. Okay, now uh, the second mail was sent to the Larry, and it's the confirmation mail. Uh, Larry has to confirm the activation to be able to log into the uh, identity management system. Okay, now his accounts uh, should be activated. Let's try. Okay, he is now able to log in to the uh, midpoint, and we can see that he was assigned uh, to J uh, COBOL and Java developer dep departments, and he got also end user role and basic role. Uh, if you look into his profile, we now see that there are three uh, projections. Uh, account was created in uh, OpenLDAP, and also uh, he was added as a member of group COBOL, groups COBOL and Java and he was also created in Google Apps. So is he really there? I mean, so, um, so we can go to our admin console in Google, do a refresh, sign in as an admin there. Let's see if we got an account for him. 
Yep, there he is, Larry. So I could do the same thing with LDAP, but. Um, I hope you believe me. Yeah, I'm, I'm a skeptic. Yeah, I know. Oh, uh, so. Um, In this first use case, we show onboarding of new identity uh, where the accounts were, was activate, were activated af uh, uh, after the Larry confirms, uh, set his password and confirmed the activation of his accounts. Uh, we show also the notification mechanism which can be used for any other uh, events and uh, uh, we show that the roles were assigned uh, or activated uh, only uh, after the Larry activates his account. The next use case is uh, self-service. Uh, it means that now we are logged in as a Larry and Larry uh, needs uh, or he realized that he needs uh, some root access to machine where his uh, development, uh, uh, where, where he do the develop, where, where he does the development, so uh, he uh, needs to request a new uh, role for it. So we are logging as a Larry, and we are going to request a role operator to be able to log in as a root to a machines. What you're giving root to Larry? Uh, he needs it. Yeah. He thinks he needs it. Okay. So he will request it. All right. Okay. Uh, we can see that uh, the approval started, and uh, in the profile we can see that uh, ro new role was not assigned because uh, it is waiting for the uh, approval. Uh, in this scenario, we have configured the uh, multi-level approval. So first, uh, the first level is security officer. So first, uh, the security officer uh, have to has to um, has to approve the request. So the security officer is you, Sean. Mm. So I will log in as you. And here we can see the work items. And we can see that you have one approval request from uh, Larry, and he is requesting a role operator because he thinks uh, he needs a root access. Okay, so am I the last one who approves this? or No, we... there is another level okay. of approval. So um, put in there that I'm skeptical. You can, you can put. Yeah, just I'm skeptical that, um, I'm just going to say I am skeptical that he does that we're going to give him that but since it's not really me that's the final i'm going to kick the can down to the next guy and let them decide okay i'm not going to give him root. it's not your responsibility okay. there is another level of approval and it's a uh, uh, approval from application owner uh, as uh, i'm midpoint developer i'm the application owner so i will log in as me and here I can see that uh, I have one approval item and that you actually approved it, but with the comment that you are skeptical. Yeah, I am skeptical. So uh, this approval uh, has a deadline and it's uh, set for, for the demo use case for one minute. So if I miss the deadline, uh, it will uh, be escalated. So. If, uh, or if uh, some person who is responsible for the approval is uh, on vacation, this approval is escalated. So let's look uh, first on the Larry's profile. And we can see that uh, even if you approve the role, there is no operator role. And uh, meanwhile, uh, the my work item uh, is uh, away. So, it so was the deadline hit, yeah, you didn't I'm, do it in time, so no, you're... No, I'm uh, very slow. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. You had better things to do, probably. It was, it was uh, yeah. escalated to... So who's it escalate to? Administrator? It's, uh, yeah, in this case it's administrator, Can it, Is it configurable? Yeah, it's It could be like the CEO or... Yeah, anyway. Okay. So uh, here we can see that uh, originally it was assigned to me to approve, but uh, as, I'm as I was uh, so 
uh, lazy and slow, uh, it was escalated to the midpoint. And so this is an example of what happens in the real world, right? Somebody goes on leave or they, they, don't, they don't answer the email, they go missing, and then meanwhile people are sitting around and, uh, you know, and they're not able to do their job. So this is an example of governance where it escalated and someone didn't do what they were supposed to do, so it escalates automatically. Yes. And now when the administrator approves his access, we can see in Larry's profile that there is new assignment for the role operator. Oh, so he does have root. Mm. Yeah, he does. So in this use case, we show the cell service uh, requesting a role and then approval process with multi-level approval stages and uh, escalation when uh, someone uh, who should approve is not available or is too lazy. Uh, it's uh, good when you have someone who is very slow. You know, you, you can, can uh, faster your uh, It's quite process. a scenario. Yeah. You packed a lot in there. Yeah. A couple questions in the back. Is there a way to get approval from like a group, a group of system administrators rather than an individual or? Yes, sure. Uh, using organizational, for, exa for example, organizational structure, you can, you can set that uh, any, anyone from the organizational structure or from the partner or managers of the organizational unit uh, can approve. So the question was, is there a way to have approval for a group? So that's a good question, and the answer is yes, you can. Okay, another question in the back? Okay, thanks. I have one more Okay. The user interface, does it support two-factor authentication? Does the user interface support two-factor authentication is the question. Uh, not directly, but you can have some single sign-on server before it, and uh, it will do it for you. But uh, uh, this uh, midpoint doesn't now support uh, only LD LDAP authentication and uh, uh, basic authentication. So the third use case is uh, when the manager, who is Mo, mm -hmm. are you okay with Mo? Let me look at him. Looks a little irritated. Uh, Mo, as uh, Larry's uh, manager, uh, needs to assign him uh, in some new role because he realized that he needs someone in his team uh, who will be responsible so for Larry audit. Larry needs another role? Yes. Okay. Larry needs uh, the audit role. So his manager is going to give it to him? Yeah. Okay. Can Mo give him auditor. Is, yes. Okay. So Mo uh, assigned the auditor role, but not for him, but for Larry. So here we can see that, oh, it's not possible to request. And there are some conflicts. Ah, I think it's uh, this, uh, what you were pointing to. Or back to static separation of Yeah, duties. and also you, you told that he cannot be yeah. operator. Well, so we've got we've established a segregation of duty constraint between um, operator, which would be say root on a machine, and auditor. So, which is a way of um, preventing, um, you know, bad things from happening, right? Of, of creating a conflict of interest because if you were auditor and admin, then you could cover your tracks, right? And so that's a way, you know, of, again, it's governance of of controlling your identity management system via policies to remain compliant. So I think Mo knows better what yeah. Larry should be. So, so Mo doesn't want Larry to have the uh, operator role? He doesn't? No. Okay. He will make him auditor. Okay, so he unassigned the operator and assigned the auditor. Yes. Okay. And uh, as the Mo is uh, Larry's uh, manager, uh, we, need, we don't need the approval process here because it's fine when manager assigned directly in our scenario. So, and now we can see in Larry's profile that uh, he is auditor and he doesn't have a uh, operator role Good. anymore. Are you, are you okay? I'm a, I feel a are little you better. Satisfied? Yeah. Well, he's still got Java there and that worries me. So, yeah. Yes, okay, so. Cobol's all right, but Java. Okay, so in this uh, scenario, we show the segregation of duty violation when uh, the user has assigned the role which was in conflict uh, with another role. 
The next uh, scenario is uh, that uh, Mo is going uh, to, I think, to Apache Con in Miami. Mo's here? He's at Apache Con? I heard so. Where's he at? Uh, that guy owes me money. Oh, you should find him. Yeah. Is he, have you guys seen him around? No, you haven't okay, seen him. Okay, so. Uh, <laughs> He's on the beach. So, uh, Mo, as he's attending the Apache Con, he's not able to perform his work. So he needs to make a delegation and uh, he will delegate his work to Curly. But uh, let's try if Curly has uh, some rights. So Curly oh. can't even sign on right now. No, Curly okay. cannot sign on. Okay, so we can, we can uh, delegate uh, most rights to Curly. Okay, and I think we should uh, <coughs> delegate all rights. It's Mo's, it's his decision, I guess. Okay. I mean, Curly is his right-hand man. Okay, so this scenario was about the deputy when, for example, some manager leave uh, for vacation or go to the Apache Con and uh, the, he needs someone to uh, do his uh, job while he's not uh, available. Uh, during uh, his vacation or during the conference... Same thing. Yeah, <laughs> almost. Uh, the manager, uh, the administrator uh, decided to start the certification campaign. What's a certification campaign? Um, you know, uh, for example, um, you have users and uh, they are assigned to some roles and uh, so sometimes you need to review these assignments if they have only appropriate roles. And so it's a more. way of figuring out what everybody has, what yes. everybody has access to? And yeah. yeah. Okay. So we will create a campaign and we will start the campaign. And as Mo is on the conference, Curly has to do his work. Oh, he can sign on, and now look, he's got... Yes, yeah. now he can sign on. Mm -hmm. sign on he's got all of Mo's power, basically. Yes, and here he can see... Uh, Those are his direct reports? Yes. Okay. The assignments in his department. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. or in most departments right. as he's doing. So it's an opportunity to review every assignment and to accept or revoke yes. those assignments individually. So do you know who is William Williams? No, but I, I mean, who the, why does he got two names that are the same? I don't know. Okay. But I mean, we should get rid of them. Yeah. And uh, also here is Larry. Are you okay with COBOL? Yeah, he can do he can do COBOL. Okay, and you are not okay no, with Java? No, he shouldn't do Java. Okay, and why? Can you can you? He's a stooge. Can you? Yeah, just say he's a stooge. I mean, that's. Okay, so and he's still. End user. So, Mo the oh no the Mo but Curly did decision and now it's up to administrator to start the remediation process. So some period of time goes by that elapses and all the managers are able to review their reports and then after that time then, then we close it. Yes. Here are our campaigns and when we open it we can see that there are more users and more assignments which we need to decide but it is about uh, uh, it's according to department and the manager should do mm -hmm. the decision so so for us are important only development department and here we can see the decisions so let's close the stage and start the remediation process so remediation is where those policies are pushed down into the target resources Yes, okay. it's going through the policy and, and something happened. Hmm. Let's see, it was this William Williams. I, I told you that. Well, I, I told you we should, that guy. It's not was good suspicious. Guy. Yeah. Okay, he's and not doing job anymore. No. Okay, I feel better. All right, good. 
He can do COBOL. That's all right. He can, but yeah. we will see later. Uh, so this last use case was about the access certification when uh, we need to um, recheck the access uh, rights and permission for the users. It was said that the manager of the department do the decision about his employees. Uh, what are the benefits of uh, the governance? Um, it uh, put more uh, security to your uh, identity management. In, it improves uh, business responsiveness and also it uh, um, make the processes more faster and uh, uh, safer. And uh, basically uh, the governance is uh, uh, about the notification, red certification, approvals, which can be also multi-level, then escalation, delegation, deputy, what we can we could see also in uh, the demo, and uh, the role life cycle and audit right, and more and more. Are you convinced now? Looks pretty good. So if you have any question. Hey. Got time for questions? Any questions from? So, uh, tell me about this point. Like, is, does your, did your company write this and open source it, or are you a company that supports Bitpoint? We, we implemented uh, it uh, from the scratch. Okay. We started like seven years ago. It's, uh, it's got a pretty rich history. Um, the, the original um, creators were in the Sun um, IDM workspace. Oh, yeah. okay. And uh, so they were, they were well versed in, in how all that worked. And then they were part of the Open IDM 1.0. Uh -huh. um, and, then, and then there was sort of a, a split in terms of, of how to proceed. And so they, they split. And so one went one way and the other one went the other way. But um, so uh, Midpoint is, uh, you know, as we said in the beginning, it's Apache Software 2.0. It's, it's, they're, they're, it's fully open source. Uh, it's, you know, it's, everything's in GitHub. There's no, no, no lockdown. And, you know, it's all, it's all there. All the fixes and bugs, public mailing list, it's all done out in the open. It's an open source project. It's always been Apache license. It was Apache 2. Dot, uh, after we uh, forked from the uh, Forge Rock. So you actually forked? Mm -hmm. uh, split. They they went there. Uh, no, it wasn't. It wasn't a fork of a Forge Rock. They are. Down. They are. They're locking it down. Yeah. Pseudo open source. Can't even get in. Open IBM 2 and it's open IBM right. 4 now. Yeah. Or almost 4. Yep. You're right. Any other questions? All right. Well. Uh, Evolvium. Evolvium. Is that a parent company? So, um, okay, so I work for Simus okay. and, uh, and, and Katka works for Evolvium. And so Evolvium is, they are the creators and the authors and the main contributors to that project. Um, Simus, we're the, we're the Open LDAP guys, okay? And so we've been around since about 99. And, and so Open, Open LDAP is our, is our main, we're the corporate sponsors of that. And uh, so, uh, you know, but we've been in the identity management space for a long time, so we're now working with Evolvium to, you know, we're providing commercial support for that software. Yep. Which is what we do for OpenLDAP. Any other questions? All right, well, thank you very much for coming and enjoy the rest of the show.